Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of building the classic Animal Crossing map in New Horizons. Uh, today we're going to focus on building the villager area or where you would pick your house, the housing area. And I'll show you what that looks like now and give you a quick overview of it. And before the video starts, I just want to say I've been having a lot of fun making like the different areas in New Horizons. And if you want to keep up with the series, I've made a playlist now that kind of just goes in order. And you can also subscribe if you want to keep uh, up with the series. I'll be building way more Animal Crossing inspired builds from the classic Animal Crossing. We're going to be trying to make this as best as we can in New Horizons. It's not going to be easy because we have a few problems we have to overcome. Uh, one, there isn't a white picket fence in the game, so we're just going to have to use the simple wooden fencing, I think. And then, second problem is the houses are diagonal, as you can see. You can't move buildings diagonally, or you can't rotate them. We have a bulletin board in the middle that just says all of the announcements and stuff. And one more problem we have is gyroids. So gyroids are not in the game, sadly. Maybe they'll get added to the game in the future, but for now, I think I'm just going to have to ignore the gyroids. Anyway, let's hop into the game and I'll walk you through me building it, the whole building process. Okay, so I'm in my map. Usually in the, in the game, this is the train station right here. If I were to, I would make it here, but we have this giant plaza in the middle, so we don't want to do that. I'm thinking I might just build it here because there's a giant space here that I could fill up. It doesn't make total sense, but at least I could probably connect it somehow to the paths up here. All right, before we continue, I wanted to show you all a neat tool called the 3D Island Planner. It is like a free tool that you can download, and I wanted to use it to show off the grid because you can actually show off the grid here and place down paths and stuff. We're gonna be remaking the housing area in here. So I thought we could start with a four block wide path. That's a uh, cobblestone, and we'll be replacing this cobblestone path with the custom version of the cobblestone that I have in game. This is because the I think the custom path gives it a more natural look, and the uh, official path doesn't really do that. It, it's kind of very square in my opinion. But as you notice, I'm just cutting into the uh, the block of four wide path every so often to make it look more natural with like some just dense. Uh, we're gonna put like flowers and bushes in those little gaps to make it look a little bit better. And I put fences in the middle. This is gonna represent the bulletin board. We're gonna get probably the campsite sign for the bulletin board. And yeah, this is the basic layout of the path that I wanted to use. All right, as you can see, I've laid out the path design that we had in the island planner. It did take a while to get all of these uh, villagers here. Uh, mostly it was making the accounts and going through the motions, and then I changed a lot of stuff with the design. But in the end, I got here. But anyway, let's decorate a little bit. So in this plaza, there is a bulletin board. We'll just put the bulletin board down really quick. I think we used a bulletin board in every episode so far. This is a, just a campsite sign turned around. So <laughs> I can't believe we used it in every episode. That's kind of funny, uh, but it does look very plain. So I thought it would be a cool idea to put some trees down right here, which is why I made these like little one wide gaps. Very nice to make. And I like how it covers the campsite sign a little bit and adds more like shrubbery. Just any plants just add so much. We could even put this further up if we want to. Very cool, I like it. Um, and then I thought, there's this ball in the original GameCube game that you're allowed to like kick around. I thought I would pay homage to that a little bit by adding a ball to the campsite sign. And unfortunately you can't kick this one around, but you could play with it. I made uh, a bench that we could put down here. I thought it would look good at the end here. So just put the garden bench down. Oops. Let's put that there. And then a street lamp would look very nice next to it. So that's what I'm going to do. Get this street lamp out. Boom. Bada bing. Move this a little closer. Uh, for these divots, I could just put bushes if I want to. So just a bush every like little divot here would look nice, I think, in my opinion. Um, I also chose orange and pink flowers for the color scheme here. So just put a pink hyacinth back here. 
and an orange rose because I feel like those colors go well together. Boom. Looks pretty nice. I've already decorated this place with bushes. I just lined the back with uh, bushes a little bit. As you can see, both of them. And then I just put a street lamp here. And then here I thought, why not? We'll put it like a drinking fountain or something for good measure. I just need to decorate the area with a lot of stuff. Um, spruce up the old place a little because in the original there wasn't many things. All right. So you might be confused on how I made this little divot for the tree. So I've just completely filled this area with the blank cobblestone to show you. So say I want the tree right where I kicked, right here on the other side of the campsite sign. Uh, I would need the cobblestone to kind of end near the hole. So you just kick your patterns out all around it, make this little plus sign, and then you can go into your custom designs. And first, you place a cobblestone left. This is because the you can see the cobblestone ends on the left, so it makes sense. Um, this one's a little bit special. Usually I would do a cobblestone bottom here. But as you can see up here, it just kind of cuts off, with, which isn't good. But oops. But luckily, the pattern creator made this uh, skinny one by one cobblestone that ends on both sides. So that's what we're going to do. I can kick everything but the, need, <laughs> the thing I need to kick. Oh, man. Good. So yeah, we'll do a cobblestone horizontal here and it ends on both sides. You don't necessarily need that pattern if you uh, if you have cobblestone on all sides. Um, so we'll put down the left pattern again. Then you can put a cobblestone up here, cobblestone top, and then that ends on the bottom. And then a cobblestone right. And boom, it makes a little hole for your uh, tree, shrub, whatever you want to put. You could put a uh, plant there, a flower, anything. So we'll put the campsite sign back. And then put the tree back. Boom. Perfect tree. All right, what I want to do now is decorate with this house like the house from Wild World. It's like the attic. So in the attic, they would use the common flooring and the common wallpaper, and they would have a rotary phone. I'm just using a podium to represent the uh, the table that the, they had. And then the wooden beds are almost exactly the same. So it works really well in this type of room. Uh, they actually have a lot of the same type of furniture. And I'm also putting a tape deck in so that I could play Stale Cupcakes. And that was the song that played during the selection screen. So here is the overview of the sleepy house. As you can see, I have Stale Cupcakes playing. It's currently playing Stale Cupcakes. So this is like the save selection screen from the uh, Wild World games. And you would just choose your character based on which bed you had. So I just kind of got all the different color beds here and the rotary phone. You never know who you were calling in this, but it was always fun having a chat with uh, the person on the other side of the phone. All right, we are going to decorate the top left house now, and we're going to do this classic Animal Crossing style because we need to include that, of course. Uh, it's actually a very simple room design. There's not much you start out with. Uh, what you do start out with is like a tape deck a diary and a wooden table it looks like and it, it had this like cobblestone floor so i'm using the basement flooring and then i'm using the common wall again because this is just like the iconic starter wall and it's used in actually both wild world city folk and uh the original game and so i'm just gonna put this cardboard box in the top left corner i didn't know how to like get a diary so i just had this essay set i think it's really good though because it still has the pen on top and it still looks like uh, something you would write on to keep notes or something. And then in the top right corner, you just put the tape deck and then you're good. All right, here we are at nighttime and I wanted to show off the place all lit up and how it looks at night because I know a lot of areas do look very beautiful at night. Unfortunately, mine does not. Um, I don't think there are enough lights, to be honest. Maybe we'll add a few more in the future, but I think it looks decent for now. Uh, but mainly I wanted to show you how to work with this trunk pattern, this Animal Crossing trunk pattern that I have over here. So I'll show you how to place that down really quick. Uh, so I'll give you a few examples. So if we come down here, we can see that this one kind of goes in like a three. You can see that, boom, it goes diagonal once, it goes diagonal twice, and it cuts off here. 
And you could do so many like funky designs with it because uh, there's a diagonal version and there's also a straight version. So you could pretty much go in any direction. Here's like a really weird funky one that I did, but I like it a lot. <laughs> so I'll show you how to make um, one of these patterns. I'll do it at the side of one of these houses just for like an example. Um, so first you need to decide which way do you want it to go and it could pretty much go in any direction. So what I'm going to do is choose, uh, maybe we'll choose diagonal. Yeah, let's go diagonal this way. So just put a middle pattern down. All right. Now you need to cut off the, uh, the ends here because I want the pattern to end here. So, uh, you pretty much match the inner circle is the best advice I can give you on how to place these paths down. Um, you see the inner circle, we're just kind of matching it with each other. Boom, boom. Pretty good. Yeah, this is a pretty easy pattern to work with. And then, um, say you wanted to go another way with this. You can go like, oh, I want to, uh, go downwards. Why not? We'll make it a small version of the, the path. So we'll do one down. And another one. It does take up a lot of design slots, these, but uh, I think it's worth it. At least in my case, I really love this path. So I just put a round corner here to round it off. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, bottom left and bottom right to close the whole pattern together. And here we have a simple little trunk pattern. Very nice. And it, it blends in with everything, I guess. You could put a bush or whatever to cover it a little bit. All right, so that was my interpretation of the housing area from the original Animal Crossing for the GameCube. If you think I could add anything to make this better, I would love to hear your suggestions in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching. And really quick, I want to shout out all of the YouTube members who stuck with me so far. I know I haven't like offered you many things, but I promise something is coming really soon special for members. So thank you. Uh, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.